If you uh, notice the front cover of today's worship uh, pamphlet, what do we notice in the front cover of the pamphlet? Wood. Seesaw. It's a seesaw. Okay. And the whole purpose of the seesaw illustration is a call to maintain what? To maintain balance, to maintain balance. Whether we want to call it maintaining balance or whether you want to call it following the middle way, that's where we're headed today. And the first illustration that I want to point out, I mentioned this a few weeks ago, it's a teaching of Jesus. And Jesus was sending his disciples out into the world. And he warns them. He tells them, look, you're like the sheep, and I'm sending you into a rough world. It's a world filled with people who will follow their self-interest. It's a world filled with sin. And he tells them that you are sheep amidst what? Wolves. wolves. And the wolves will just rip you apart. What is very interesting in my mind is that there's an inclination that a lot of folks have to say that people are basically good. good. But the one Christian doctrine that's validated by any evaluation of history is that people are basically sinners. Because if you look at history, it's a history of warfare, it's a history of greed. We live in a world, let's blow this up for a moment, we live in a world where there's great wealth and yet there are people who are starving. We constantly read about corrupt officials in government. We read about corruption in business. We see it on the TV all the time. It's the reality of sin and self-interest in our world. And Jesus acknowledges this. He sends the disciples out and he says to them, you are like sheep amidst wolves. And then he gives them some counsel. He says to them, be as wise as the what? As the servant. Understand where you are. Understand how people will take advantage of you. Understand what the reality of life is. And yet, if we take that teaching and we understand I'm supposed to be as wise as a serpent, understand where people are coming from, understanding the reality of self-interest, understanding the reality of sin, what that leads us to be in time is it leads us to be what? Cynical about everybody. So when Jesus tells them he is wise as a serpent, he then balances that, here's the concept of the balance, he balances that, and he tells them, be as wise as the serpent, but be what, also be how? Gentle as doves. Be as gentle as the doves, be as innocent as the dove. Now, if we maintain that kind of innocence walking into this world, we get eaten out. So if we maintain the innocence and we take it too far, we become naive. So Jesus tells them, be as wise as the serpent, understand the world that you're going into, but also maintain the innocence of the dove. How do you make sense of that? Now, if you take a dualistic view or a binary view, in other words, one way or the other, dualistic refers to two, we, we end up with a problem, because we end up thinking, I have to be either one way or the other. So my suggestion is, is that what Jesus calls them to do is to follow the middle way, or to find a balance between wisdom and innocence. Be wise, but have the gentleness of the dove. Be as gentle as the dove, but be wise. It's the middle way between wisdom and innocence. Now let's take uh, for a moment, let's bring our attention to the first reading. The first reading is really a metaphor in my mind that we're all blessed. We all have talents and gifts. And so what does Jesus say that we are to do in this parable, what is the teaching, as to what we are to do with these talents or gifts? Someone want to take a stab at that. Invest in growth. Ingrid, you got all the answers today. <laughs> Invest in life. Go out and live. Don't be like the one, uh, the one person who is afraid and hides their gift. And, and Jesus basically says, if you hide your gift, what's going to happen in the end? You've got one. 
Yeah, I got that. Yeah, I got that. Now, we, we understand this. Uh, we, <laughs> if you're getting older, and a lot of us are, <laughs> we all are, I guess you could say. What happens as you get older and you don't use the talents or the gifts or the abilities that you have? They atrophy. Yeah. They atrophy. Yeah, you end up, it, 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 it's not good. You, you, whatever you had before, it's gone. I think it's really interesting. Um, uh, it's really interesting because I think as we get older, we understand that if we don't use those gifts, they're gone. When we're younger, uh, I think it's a different scenario. In my old church, I had three guys in the church, and two of them had uh, ripped Achilles tendons. They were in their 40s. They ripped Achilles tendons and a ripped knee. And this is because they were in adult soccer leagues. And I talked to a doctor about this, and he said, you know what the problem is for people that are in their 40s or 50s? Their bodies have declined, but their mind says, I can do it. And so they end up with back problems. And they end up with all these other problems. So when we're younger, I, I think there's a part of us that says, I can do it. But the reality is I really have to work at it slowly, slowly, slowly. And if I don't work at it, I lose it. It's interesting because you can take that teaching, invest yourself, use your gifts, do something, go for it, and then we celebrate that. But then what does Jesus do? He, if we look at the example of Jesus, he couches that. And we look at our second reading today, and he says, in essence, he says, we're going to put the brakes on this because we're going to balance this, invest yourself, go for it. We're going to balance that with what? Second reading. Rest. Rest. You gotta rest. You gotta step back. You gotta go to cup. If only those guys in their forties or fifties had understood the call to rest. You just can't go go go. You gotta find balance. The middle way between invest and go and the call to disengage and rest. And what I think is really interesting now is that you know, Jesus taught this, he modeled this. And yet it seems to be only recently in our society that we begin to see articles that celebrate the need for eight hours of what? I don't remember reading that when I was younger, do you? No. You do? That was completely out of touch. <laughs> that was completely lost. Thank God I didn't read my case then for the years. So we see the emphasis on sleep. We see the emphasis on recovering from hard endeavors. We see the emphasis on rest. So again, follow me now. He's wise as the serpent, as innocent as the dove. Find the middle way, the balance. Invest yourself with all of your gifts, yet balance that with the need for rest. Find the balance. Now let's look at today's gospel lesson. And you may disagree with my interpretation of it, which, which I would argue with you about. One of the things that I think is interesting is that James and John come to Jesus and they say, we want to be in positions of power and influence. We want to be at your right hand and your left hand and your glory. What does that show about James and John? What did they have? Ambition. Ambition. What? Ambition. Ambition. Go for it. We love ambition, don't we? We love ambition. Ambition is what moves people to use their gifts, to get invested. And, and when we see people that do that, most of the time we celebrate that. It's terrific. And what I think is very interesting about this gospel reading is that when James and John show this kind of ambition, Jesus does not directly criticize their ambition. Jesus doesn't say to them, 
You shouldn't be that way. You shouldn't be filled with yourselves like that. You shouldn't be looking out for yourself. He does not criticize that. Now the other disciples are all indignant. Who are these two whippersnappers that want to have all this influence? What about us? So they're upset about it. But Jesus doesn't directly criticize them for having that ambition. But what does he do? He says to the disciples, he says, look, life is not found by being at the top of the heap, by being number one. Life is found instead through what? Service. Service. So I would suggest to you that what we have here once again is the teaching of Jesus to find the middle way. It's the middle way between ambition, yes, use your gifts, yes, invest yourselves, and to balance that with what? Humility and what else? What does he talk about in that gospel reading? To balance it with what? Service. Service. Balance it with service. It's the middle way again. Wisdom and innocence. Invest yourself but rest. Ambition balanced with service. The middle way. It's interesting, uh, if, if any of you have ever come visit us where we live, uh, we live at the end of, well not the end, two miles down this dirt road, and it's way back in the woods. And there's a fellow that lives on our road, his name's Gary, and um, Gary's a fascinating fellow. He, uh, if you go by his house, he usually has five or six rock, uh, what would you call them, Marshall? Towers. 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 Yeah, he balances rocks. So some of them only have three rocks. Some of them have made ten rocks. And he suddenly crouches down and he balances all of these rocks on top of one another in these fascinating formations. And it's really an art form to be able to balance these rocks. And on occasion, the towers fall down. If a heavy truck goes by and the tower happens to be close to the road, the shaking of the ground. Will, will cause the tower to crash. Gary said that you know that, that his real nemesis are the birds, because the birds land on top of the towers and throw the balance and the towers come down. Of course, the storms will blow the towers over. And if you get depending on when you go by, you'll see Gary there rebuilding the towers. For me, it's a metaphor that every day we deal with those issues that throw off the balance. And each day for us is a time to rebuild the tower, if you will. To rebuild, to find the balance. Whether it is a storm that comes and knocks it down, whether it is somebody who comes along and sits on top of the tower and falls down, hmm. whether it is something passing by, a truck, something. We'll throw off the balance. So part of our Christian walk is heeding that teaching of Jesus to find the balance, to reconstruct the tower. It's never, it's never rebuilt the same way. Each day is a new day. And so if you look at these teachings, I'm not taking these teachings in isolation. I want to look at them in the whole context of what Jesus taught. It's the balance. I need mean, to have wisdom and innocence. Find the balance. I want to be invested to use my gifts, yet I also see the need to disengage in time for rest. Find the balance. I'm going to be ambitious, yet I'm also going to balance my ambition with a call to service. Find the balance. And each day it becomes our effort with God's guidance to live that little way of balance. Thank you for your attention. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.